CFS and the stress response. In the last week, their news came out. A couple of researchers, they made a test in which they could measure if someone has chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, ME, and fibromyalgia. The test turned out that the persons, um, the cells of the persons who had CFS react very, very differently than normal cells, normal healthy people cells on stress. So it seems like there is sort of an allergy on stress going on. In the book, Heal Your Life, written by Louise Hay, she writes about how CFS is related to always pushing your limits and therefore probably not knowing your limits. At the same time, we all know that the Epstein-Barr virus or other herpes viruses, which are dormant viruses, can play a really big role in CFS ME. She writes in the same book that the Epstein-Barr virus is a stress virus. It's triggered by stress. And if you have watched many other videos or if you, if you really have meditated on how you are and who you are, you probably have noticed that everybody with CFS is somehow uh, having this you had a type A personality, or what they say, the stress identity. So again, stress, stress, stress. So this movie is about CFS and the unconscious stress response. So when the body is in a stress mode, the body is in the fight or flight survival mode. In this mode, all the energy goes on to surviving. But the digestive system and the immune system are not working properly. So over a period of time, and this is not just a few months, this is either years or maybe decades, the body will de develop deficiencies and like mineral deficiency or vitamin deficiencies and the body won't work as good. B bacteria and all kinds of organisms love this, like the Epstein-Barr virus. A stressed body is a place where they can thrive in. So we need to reverse this and access what's been called the parasympathetic nervous system. In this video I will talk about CFS and the stress response but in the next video, I will talk about some uh, methods to calm yourself down. A really good time to um, study your own stress response is when you feel that your symptoms are increasing. Are you really calm? And I studied that myself a lot in the last few years. And that's why I came up with this video. If there would be a stress a stress relax scale from 1 to 10 where um, 1 would be totally calmed down and 10 would be totally stressed. If a, such a scale would exist, most of us won't know the lower numbers of the scale. We probably think we're really relaxed where in fact we're only like a 4 or something. And every time we calm down a little bit more, we're like surprised. Wow, I didn't know this level of relaxation even exists. Even I have this, like a few weeks ago, I was such in a calm state of mind. The only thing I wanted to do for days was just laying in a hammock and do nothing. And I did it because I loved it. It was like really new for me. It was something that I did not even remember that was possible. In English, the words for fight or flight mode and rest and digest mode really tells the whole story. Unfortunately, in our society, stress is normal and we teach our children to be stressed and you yourself were probably taught to be stressed and there's also the personality that you created over time so we're all being very very stressed the number one key to being less stressed is awareness and listening to your body building a relationship with your body that's probably the reason why it has gotten this far anyway if you would have a stress bucket, the first symptoms you will have is when the bucket is like half full or something. But when the bucket is overflowing, that's when you got like CFS or any other chronic disease. But awareness of when your symptoms increase can actually guide yourself to like another place, a place l with less symptoms. And over time, your digestive system will work better 
and you start to feel like an increasement of energy. Unfortunately, our society is so chronically stressed that most people die from the consequences. Unfortunately, when you're being stressed, you're going to create more stress. Think of a person who comes home from work and is having dinner in front of the television watching an action movie. Well, that's not very, very calming down. But also, when I'm stressed, like when, I'm, when I feel like an increasement of, uh, of symptoms, it's, I, th I find it very hard to wind down. All I want to do is like um, look at my phone a little bit more, watch another YouTube movie, watch another movie. But the actual calming down is something that I really have to go through. And it can take up to 30 minutes to really, really calm down. And this is time you just really have to allow yourself to feel and to experience. When the digestive system is weakened and the immune system is weakened and the body is a perfect breeding space for all kinds of stuff you don't want to be in there, like harmful bacteria and pathogens and fungus, also your neurotransmitters are being depleted. And depleted neurotransmitters are the reason for like uh, symptoms like depression, um, other chronic illnesses, burnouts. It just varies the way that the neurotransmitters are, um, are depleted. And in chronic fatigue syndrome, usually, it's very, very common to uh, have a depleted neurotransmitter of GABA. And of course, there are also dopamine and all the other neurotransmitters that can be depleted. Also, I would, I would like to talk about illnesses as a good thing. Because it means, if you're ill, that you're calming down. Because once, as long as you're very, very stressed, you can't be ill. So sometimes our symptoms or just the feeling of being ill gets in increased while we actually calm down. So it's not a bad thing always to think about it. As most of our behavior is based on stress, it can be very hard to recognize the small symptoms that are actually pointing out to a stressful body which are, for example, feeling hungry after you wake up. Usually, when you're not stressed, you would only feel hungry like at 10 o'clock or something. The first few hours, you sh you're not supposed to be hungry when you're, when you're calm. An increased heart rate or irregular heartbeat. You need entertainment while you're eating. Irregular breathing. Superficial breathing. You have black and white thoughts or all or nothing thinking patterns, smartphone addiction, not having a good feel connection with the body. For example, you're not being able to feel the energy or uh, the part of a knee or f from toes. This is usually caused by excessive thinking and forgetting uh, about the body. Also, people who have this feel like they're like a, a walking head. Also, there are uh, common stress signals like uh, skin conditions. Uh, the react when the reactive thinking is suppressed, your reactive thinking takes over. This is when people are regretting what they actually said. Um, when the digestive system is affected, you have you start developing all kinds of digestive issues uh, like diarrhea or irritable bowel syndrome or ulcers. Uh, weight fluctuations, hair loss, poor sleep, food sensitivity, headaches and migraines, and basically just all kinds of psychosomatic symptoms like unexplained pain and fatigue, migraines, frequent urination, hernia, spastic colitis, joint pain, groggy feelings, knee and spine problems, sexual dysfunction, intestinal issues, and with psychosomatic issues, Please do not think that these things are only in your head because it's real, it's physical, but they are being caused by stress because of psychosomatic stuff. Also, reevaluate some behaviors that you've learned yourself and that were even being praised by others, like philosophizing. Usually, this is a sign that emotionally there is something very, very wrong and you feel the need to look for answers. So philosophizing is already an indication of being stressed. But also being in a hurry, being productive, multitasking, 
you have a lot of to-do lists and you only want to achieve stuff. You're way too ambitious. You have an interest in self-help books. This usually means that you want to improve yourself, which is stressful in the first place. Uh, if you won't have stress, then you do not want to improve yourself most of the time. Well, just not too ambitious stuff. Um, and creating and selling an image about yourself. And having symptoms in the first place can also cause an extra layer of stress. Think about being unwell and not knowing how to get well. Not being able to trust your body. Worrying that a certain activity is going to increase symptoms like having a shower, going for a walk, chatting to someone, etc. And there are also some behaviors that we usually do not talk about. Like being obsessed with the body and its looks, trying to be perfect, look perfect, like either with makeup or uh, muscles or weight or all of these things, your hair. It's just really stressful. And usually all these things were just indications of emotional feelings that were below all these kind of behaviors, like not feeling good enough, loneliness, feeling like you should be somewhere else, feeling like the present moment is only um, a gateway to the next moment neediness or trying to feel good via others the fear of missing out feeling that something is missing in your life getting caught in the loop of thinking usually a familiar pattern that can often be triggered by an event not setting boundaries not living the life you want to live Basically, the last thing is not living authentically. For example, you push yourself to do stuff and you get symptoms. But why would you want to do that in the first place? Usually listening to our symptoms can be a very, very good thing because it means that something is wrong and that we need to adjust our behavior. And out of all these signals and behaviors and emotional patterns, we can develop an identity of a person that we're trying to be. This can be the people pleaser, the clown, or many other behaviors. Some people say like they are very, very productive or they're like uh, very, very active. And at the same time, they condemn laziness. But then this is not really the full spectrum of who we are as a human being. We cannot be active without being an inactive. We cannot be productive without being lazy. They're all part of our, of our being. And once you condemn sort, uh, once you condemn s certain behaviors, it's stressful for the body. The list of all these symptoms and emotional states can go on and on. There are just too many of them to, to mention in here. And as you will calm down, bit by bit you will discover some of these feelings or urges or habits and mostly with all these kind of things that they're they're un they are unconscious so slowly by slowly you need to rediscover your body and thing will come things will come to the surface and while we're working on the body and on its symptoms and on stress we are going to feel like the body has lots of lots of layers of emotional issues it's like an onion and maybe we're never really finished with um, peeling all the emotional issues and processing it but we can develop a different relationship with our body and listening to the symptoms becoming aware when the symptoms start not only when it's too late but before that and i think that's what cfs is all about calming down but also learning who you are when you get symptoms and what do you really want the first step is recognizing the stress and calming down. So the next video, I will talk about calming down techniques. See you and hang in there.